episode, but now we're here and we're live online. Welcome to all the viewers out there. So, shall we welcome her with your love, Dami in from Australia! <laughs> Is it as warm here as it is on stage? It's much warmer here. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I mean, walk us through your second rehearsal. Uh, I felt that today I, I was a lot more nervous for some reason um, because I already know what the stage is like and how big it is. And um, I came on and yeah, I was really nervous, but I feel like uh, I. When I performed, I, I actually did better, so um, <laughs> no, I'm not showing off, I'm just saying what happened. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, it was, it was good and I feel like um, I've improved and uh, everything around me has improved from the first one, so uh, I'm hoping for the last one it will be even better. Any technical details you have to work on for the next time? Can I answer that? Yeah, of course, of it, course. Ours is a very complex uh, technical piece, and with that comes a risk that you can make mistakes. So we have to be very careful and diligent in the way that that's followed through. There's a lot to do. Uh, we don't want the audience to see Dami being lifted off the podium. Uh, we don't want to see the podium <laughs> moved away. Mm -hmm. So, and there is a lot of gauze, hollow gauze images. So it's complicated to get right. But by the same token, we just want it to be something that's quite different and tells a story. Yeah. How was your feeling when you were in the viewing room watching it? Um, I just, I think I, I felt quite good watching it and. Um, you know, the last time I ran the song, it was much better than the, you know, the first two times I did it. And even when I was coming off the podium, I didn't scream. I didn't, you know, I, 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 that's my biggest challenge: trying to sound normal when I'm being <laughs> when I'm jumping off the podium. So uh, yeah, but I didn't do that in the third take. So um, yeah, I felt quite good watching it, and yeah, it was exciting. Can you tell us something about the song? Because you're working with a hit factory, people producing some good songs. <laughs> um, yeah, the song is, you know, um, it was written especially for me and for Eurovision. But also, um, we wanted the song to really reflect what I wanted to sing about, and that's why it's about, you know, feeling away from the loved one. And um, yeah, my, my husband actually arrived. Uh, last night, so uh, that's yeah. I feel much better today having him near me. But that's you know the song is about not you know being so far apart from him, um, and uh, also you know we wanted the song to be um, not just for a big show, but also be heard on the radio as well. So that was an important thing to think about, and um, yeah, it, it's in Sweden the songs reached. A really high place on the chart, so I'm very, I'm very, very happy with that. And I think the boys' DNA, who wrote the song, are also quite pleased with um, how everybody's embraced the song. So yeah, we're really excited. Perfect. Let's take some questions from the audience. Gentleman here in the yellow shirt, please. Hi, I'm Daniel from Sweden, mm -hmm. and I must say you are my personal favorite in this competition, Yay. actually. <laughs> <laughs> I must repeat that. Uh, and hearing you live today gave me goosebumps. So, it's a really good song. Thank you. I was a little bit concerned uh, about the performance today because uh, the background music seemed to be too loud and your voice didn't come through. That's oh. my concern, but it's Otherwise, it sounded very, very good anyway. So, oh, okay. is there anything you? Yeah. yeah. Um, thanks for bringing that up. Like, yeah. I, I think what it sounds 
in the room is different to what I'm hearing in the ear, and for me it felt quite good, but um, do you want to I, say anything? I felt the same. In the viewing room it sounded really good, the mix sounded good, but we'll go back now and just listen to how it sounded in the room, and we really thank you for that observation. Yeah. That could be really helpful. Yeah, yeah. We that, want people to hear Dami. I thought what how she's saying today was really exciting. It, it really filled my heart, so I'm glad to hear that you loved it. Yes, please, the gentleman over there in the jeans shirt. Hello, I'm Ahmed Haloum for ESCBubble.com. I want to congratulate you for making a history again for Australia, participating again. And my question, I have two tiny questions for you. The first one, you knew, and what are you getting to when they told you, oh, you're going to do your audition? You know all these big things <laughs> that what was coming ahead. No. And the second question yeah. is, uh, What's next after Eurovision? You're, I know you have uh, a tour or something like that. I, 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 you think if Australia remains in Eurovision Song Contest, let's see. Mm. Yeah, would you like to repeat again? At Eurovision? <laughs> I, well, I... Yeah, I'm really happy to be part of Eurovision and, you know, it's really exciting for the whole of Australia to be invited to be a part of it. Um, for the first question, I've, you know, I've, I watched Eurovision on TV in Australia, so I was like, oh yeah, that's, you know, it's a big event and it's a lot of fun, lots of countries coming together, but um, I don't think I knew how big it actually is until I got here and I started seeing, like, all the people so excited, like, mil million flags, Eurovision flags everywhere in the city, and so many of you here, you know, um, and how passionate everybody is for Eurovision. And I just, yeah, I, I think, and when I saw the stage, um, that's also when I realized, wow, this is like a huge production and so many countries involved. Like it's the biggest thing I could ever imagine. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's overwhelming in a way. And I feel very emotional just being a part of it. Um, yeah, but I'm trying to yeah focus and not get too overwhelmed by everything. Um, yeah, and for the second question, what's happening after Eurovision for me? Well, um, I'm going back to do an Australian national tour first, but I would really love to see you know what else I can be doing outside of Australia, and I hope that I can um, build enough supporters through Eurovision outside of Europe, I mean, outside of Australia, in Europe and, you know, other countries to see whether I can tour and do more outside because I, I feel like I'm still young and <laughs> I, can, I can, you know, anything that comes my way, I'm, I'm happy to try and keep, keep uh, you know, spreading the music. So that's my plan. Yes, over here, microphone from a homeboy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Dami, it's Blair Martin from Radio 4 Triple Z in Brisbane, Australia. Oh. Can I just say, firstly, thanking this gentleman up, your song is so popular out there in the press centre. Sanja from Serbia, when she came out from her one-on-one -on -one interviews while you were on the screen, she was singing. Oh, wow. She was belting it out, so you have captured the imagination of so many people here, so thank you thank for doing you. that. Speaking about singing, I noticed during today's rehearsal in the second verse, you've changed the vocalising a little, you've gone back mm. to more of what it was in the recording. I personally love what you were doing on... Mm. I really love... Because I felt there was more emotion, more mm. connection for the lyrics. Mm. Will you go back to that? Were you just playing the stuff today? Because I think your strength is vocalising and harmonising, it mm. really shows this is a song contest and you're a singer. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, that's a really good question and observation as well because, um, yeah, so the first, in the first rehearsal I did change up the second verse, you know, um, quite kind of dramatically by taking it up the octave, but I thought with everything that's going on on stage with, you know, um, with the the social media, the content. I just thought it it didn't fit as well when I changed up the the um, the notes. So um, we were just testing which 
you know, w what works best as a whole performance rather than just songs. So I think if I were to sing just on stage with no no other, you know, production, then I could do lots of different things. But then I, I really want this performance to work as a whole, um, including, you know, what's happening visually and, you know, everything else. So um, it was we're still discussing you know what works the best and i guess after we watch back the second performance a few more times we'll we could be changing more things um we could be going back to the old one it, it really depends how it works and feels as the whole performance do you want to say anything more about that i, I think what you're trying to show is the, i mean it's a rehearsal and and you're just looking for the best way to describe the story of the song from one end to the other. And it's necessary just to sort of... It, it, it's also a fact that the song is in the top of the Swedish charts and, and there's... But perhaps it's, it's best to sing it the way the audience is understanding it. So we were just weighing up. So we'll listen mm. and kind of come back from there. And I think because you... Look, like. I, I assume you love my song and you listen to it a lot, so the change is really fresh for you, but then maybe some people haven't heard the song mm. and they're hearing it for the first time, so we have to maybe think about both sides mm. as well. It's not a backward step, Blake. Like. It's, it's just looking for the, the strongest potential thing for a broad audience. That's why we rehearse. The gentleman in the <laughs> white shirt there. Hey Dami, Eamon Atkinson from Channel 7, also from Brisbane. Oh, hey! hey. Uh, two questions. Uh, firstly, the odds this morning were 16 to 1. When I checked after your rehearsal, it was 12 to 1, so they keep increasing. Uh, even the technical director made a comment how good your odds are. Um, how does that make you feel? And the second question, what's the biggest uh, step you have to take in the final stages of your preparation now? Um the you know um betting sites is, is that what he mentioned the yeah um i guess it's a good thing right i don't know yeah. how all that works but it, yeah it's a good thing so <laughs> um uh yeah it, it it feels really really good and um you know i came into eurovision not assuming anything like I'm, I'm you know as much as i want to try my best and do the best for australia um, I didn't come in to be like, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to win or be in top three or anything like that. I just wanted to, you know, um, perform and, and do my best and see, you know, how many people I can inspire. So to get that kind of great reaction, I'm super thankful and I just, I'm just, you know, thankful to be just here. Um, when I first arrived in Stockholm, I remember thinking in my room, like, um, you know, like there's so much going on, you know, who's going to win, how well I'm going to do, but for me, I'm just grateful and I know how far I've come, you know, I, I know like I had days, you know, years ago before this happened where I was like, I have no one to perform to, I really want to sing, but there's no one wants to invite me to sing at their events and I was just like doing nothing and I started teaching and it was boring. <laughs> um, so yeah, what I'm trying to say is I'm just grateful to be here. I just want to do the best and um, work with my team to deliver the best performance and hopefully as you know, like lots of people will love it as much as we do. Yes, please. No white t-shirt here. Hi, Dami. Um, Reg Domingo from SX Magazine, also from Sydney, Australia. <laughs> Um, when the opportunity uh, presented itself for you to represent Australia at Eurovision, what went through your mind? Did you have to go away and think about it or did you say yes right there and there? How do you recall the whole selection process? Uh, <clears throat> so, I've said this many times but I want to say it again because my fans called the Dami Army, they're, you know, the most amazing uh, fan group and the most powerful ones, I think, and they've been really pushing to um, send me to Eurovision. They wanted me to get selected, so they kept doing this online campaign for years, or well, two years to be exact, <laughs> but really consistently all the time. And, you know, I think uh, I, I was, as time got closer to, you know, the, um, 
when we we're going to find out who who got selected, I you know I was like, oh maybe maybe not. You know I really didn't know, um, but you know I it could have gone in any direction. But when I actually found out that you know they they wanted me and Paul wanted me <laughs> to represent uh, Australia, I was I was really excited, but I, I also at the same time couldn't really believe it was actually happening and. Um, uh, my manager told me, you know, you, you can sleep on it and think about it. And I was like, like, what is there to think about? Like, I, I slept on it and I'm like, like, as soon as I got, I'm like, yes, 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 yes. So, so um, yeah, to me, I, this was the best thing, uh, best opportunity for me. And um, my parents have been like wanting this to happen to me and they've been praying that I would get selected, so um, that's that's why I was selected. So, by the way, yeah, so I was happy. Can I just yeah, quickly one. say, just just yeah, um, sure. very, very briefly, I just wanted to say that Dami was always our first choice. Uh, we were really so pleased that that she decided that she wanted to do this, and it's been a, an absolute delight to work with her and to develop this, and with uh, Sony, her team. They've been the most fantastic partners. So we have a really uh, enjoyable team behind her. Everyone uh, from Stephanie, the producer, Nic Nicolene, the production designer, everyone is so enjoying being uh, part of Dami's Army here. Yeah. Hi, Bern from EurovisionLive.com. Uh, I have a question regarding your supporting singer, Salim. She's uh, the Swedish singer who represented uh, Estonia in 2002. Oh, yes. What kind of advice did you give to you? Oh, um, is that Anna, right? Yeah, Anna, yeah. Anna. Um, yeah, she told me she's done it for how many years? So, such a long time and she knows exactly um, how this all works. So, um, I think she, she just said, you know, just enjoy, in, try to enjoy it. And, um, yeah, I think she, she's been really, really encouraging to me, saying, oh, you know, you're doing great, you know, and she's, like, just, just having somebody uh, who knows what's going on, like, be so uh, friendly and supportive and um, saying nice things to me and keeping me company, that has just been really, really nice. And, um, yeah, I just feel really supported emotionally and with everything, vocally, you know, um, yeah, so... That's Anna Salim. Final question from our Norwegian friend there at the back. Hello, Nor Morten from the Norwegian Eurovision blog. Hello. As you have told us, you are being lifted down from the podium during the song. So I wonder if you have nightmares that on the actual night the two guys will not show up and you have to come up with a backup plan. Um, well, I hope that doesn't happen because we don't have a backup plan. Um, <laughs> we will have after this question. Yes. Um, I, I, I guess I could just jump down, but I, yeah, I break don't know. The break, yeah, break the heels, and it, it would get lots of views, I guess, if that happens. <laughs> so, thank you very much, Dami. Thank you, Australia. Thank Time you, for everybody. phone opportunities Bye. over there. They're already waiting for you. Thank you. Good luck.